my men are deciding on how we're going to read the letters that Jesus got for Christmas. And um, Terrence was thinking that maybe after we, we read each one, I could give my thoughts on it for, you know, for the camera. And Brent said, that's an excellent idea. And then I was thinking, does Jesus want to weigh in on any of these letters? We could include that as well if you want. Like you could type out what Jesus said and I'd read it. Terrence said, good idea. And then Brent Spider says, oh my, there's a dove on my head. I said, Jesus must like the idea. And then Terrence Jenkins said, oh my goodness, I know what that means. The dove be wearing a Santa hat. <laughs> so... Okay, I'm looks so I'm recording. I'm recording. I'm not going to type anymore. So, uh, you all can hear me even though I'm recording. Uh, can you all hear me? Uh, to show that it's working, just type out love, L O V E. Okay, we we're, we're in business. I'm I'm recording. I'm not going to do clips because uh well, I, I guess I could do clips. No, but I don't want to do clips because I want to get this all. I'll decide if I'm going to edit later or not. So I'm recording right now. It's been going for 50 minutes. We're going to have a lot of blank space on this video. <laughs> so I may just, I may do some editing. I'm going to have to do it anyways because I'm doing it in clips. So it's no big deal. I got the video going right now. We've been going for a minute and 28 seconds. Love. Okay, we can start the video after a brief introduction after the final edit. Okay, good. So it should record everything then. Yeah, I'm reading what you're writing. Did you just want to hear my voice? Is that why you wanted to record this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it would go more smoothly. Okay. I'm reading what Brent Spiner's writing. Okay, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I'll put that over this way. Okay, so hello, Gale followers. That's what Brent's saying. <laughs> I'm Brent Spiner, and Jesus is here with me. I'm going to go get me some water. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> and I'm back. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the picture, just checking. I'll put it right down there. Yeah. No, I don't want to put that there. Put it someplace where it won't do any harm. That's a good spot. Okay. Are you ready for the first letter, dear? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Terrence Jenkins is typing, Terry, be here too. Okay, opening the first letter. That's Brent Spiner. There's a curly black, curly black chest hair in the adhesive. I wonder who this could be from. That's strange. <laughs> curly black chest hair in the adhesive. The letter reads... Dear Jesus, lick my butthole, lick my butthole, lick my butthole, lick, 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 my butthole, but, but, hole, lick, 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 lick my butthole, Bubba the Black Jesuit. Brad Spiner is typing. <laughs> huh? Jesus, do you understand this one? Jesus says he can help me translate it. Oh my goodness, that's from Terrence Jenkins. Hmm, Brent's saying, hmm, oh wow. That's Brent. <clears throat> Brent Spiner is typing. Terrence Jenkins, oh my goodness. Yeah, I could. Jesus is helping me understand Bubba language. That's Brent Spiner. I can read his letter now. That's Brent. 
let me type what he said. The screen keeps going up and I have to keep it down. So I'll, I'll work with it, but it's not cooperating with me. <laughs> Brent says, I can read his letter now. Let me type what he said. Dear Jesus, there is not a day that goes by that my thoughts don't linger on my late ginger boyfriend. His pure boyish countenance was everything I had ever dreamed filling my deep black heart with a forbidden love I had never known. I was the chocolate, and he was my strawberry. In loneliness I now count the cold, vacuous days that have passed since my star-crossed, fire-crotched lover was tragically ripped from my arms by that amorphous behemoth, Sarah Avery. This creature, too inhumanly fat to have any right to exist, tore me from my one true love, the love of my eternal black existence who will never be replaced. I'll confess to you my secret. On the very day my love was taken from me, I had been, I had been planning to propose marriage. On that same tragic day, I had the rainbow ring in my pocket, and to this day it has never left. My final words to the love of my life were, lick my butthole, and his final words to me were, I will. My heart refuses to believe he will not one day fulfill that promise to me. Jesus, my Christmas wish is to see my ginger boyfriend one last time and tell him that no time or distance will ever change the fact that he is the one and only man for me and his delicate quivering tongue, the only tongue for my cold, lonely butthole. Sincerely, Bubba the Black Jesuit. Brent Spiner is typing. That's making me cry. <laughs> I feel so bad for Bubba. <sighs> oh, okay, where am I? Oh, it keeps flick, flicking up. Wow, Bubba is surprisingly articulate. Who knew that man had such depth? That's what Brent is saying. Terrence Jenkins, I be holding back tears. Yeah, me too, Terrence. Um, and Brent's saying, I bet he would be a good poet. What do you think of this one, Gail? I agree with you. Um, I am really surprised that the amount of the depth of feeling and the love that this Bubba has for his gay partner. I mean, I remember Jesus said to us that he doesn't have anything against gay people or homosexuals. And um, the fact that he's allowing this letter to be read, I think is Jesus's message to, to the gay community out there that if you genuinely love your partner, then Jesus just says, rock on, man. He's all for it. And he understands, and he supports your love for your, uh, for your gay partner. I, Jesus, to me, I think he, he supports all forms of, of true love, even if it's unconventional or not in the realm of traditional Christian Christianity, you know. So the fact that Bubba had such deep feelings for his partner is truly moving. And maybe it's not in the traditional context of what we would call a marriage, but it's every bit as meaningful and deep as, and committed. And uh, I think we should... Um, uh, embrace anybody who honors true love, even if it's not like the way we would do it. And I think Jesus feels that way too. He, uh, he really despises the us-them mentality that's kind of taken over a lot of the religions and Christianity. And, and he wants us to understand that even though somebody may be different from us or may not agree with our perceptions of what is true religion, or faith that we need to keep an open mind and understand that any form of true love is cool with Jesus. Hmm, I agree with you, Gail. That's what Brent Spiner says. What do you think, Jesus? Will Bubba's wish be granted? Brent Spiner is typing. Jesus says, I won't spoil any surprises, but Bubba, 
2018 will be a blessed year for you. <laughs> oh, I bet he's going to get his lover back. <laughs> oh, keep the faith in your heart, Bubba. That's from Jesus to Bubba. Good luck, Bubba. That's what Brent Spiner says. He puts Jesus' words in quotes. I'll pray for him. Yeah, we'll all pray for Bubba. It sounds like he truly loved his gay partner. I mean, that happened a while ago, a couple years ago, and he's still missing him. I can relate, even though I'm not a lesbian, because I've never, I'd never be able to get over Brent Spiner. Like, if he died two years ago, I'd still be thinking about him all the time. Brent Spiner is typing. I don't think Bubba, Bubba has ever let another man lick his butthole since. Wow. You know what? He has a love for his gay partner that is just as deep and committed as the love between a man and his wife. And this is not to say that Jesus is, um, I don't think Jesus necessarily prefers the gay marriage. He prefers the man-woman relationship. But in cases like this, where the love is so deep, so pure, and so true, I think Jesus would honor it. Let, uh, let alone forced one to. Oh, in other words, he hasn't been doing any rape. Uh, Brent Spiner says, I agree. In other words, Jesus approves, prefers the man-woman relationship. But when you've got a, a love this unusual, Jesus will honor it. So, because he honors all forms of true love. And Brett Spiner says, I agree. And then Terrence Jenkins says, let alone forced one to. So B Bubba has never, ever, has never let another man lick his butthole since. And he hasn't been doing any um, rape of anyone either. He's just been thinking about this lover that he lost. And that's pretty moving, actually, when you think about it. He's so devoted to him. How can we not honor somebody who has such devotion and commitment in his heart for his lover? And then Brent Spiner says, I agree. So, very true, Brent says. Okay, are we ready for the next letter? Yes. Still recording. Someone been wondering how much time I've spent. Oh, we're at 14 minutes and 29 seconds. I'm not sure if I'm going to edit it or not. I'll decide, you know. I don't want to leave anything important out. This one has Star Wars stickers all over it. Wow, that's interesting. It must be a millennial. I agree. It sounds like a millennial. Jesus seems to have a special heart for millennials. I think it's because they're the ones that are going to be going through the tribulation. I've noticed that about Jesus. We know it's closed because the Antichrist has already appeared. So it's, the tribulation's not far off. The letter reads... Dear Jesus, all my life I have resented the fact that I was born with a tiny, unusable micro penis. I have been taunted and laughed at my whole life and I am unable to pleasure women or even myself. Is this from TJ? <laughs> Never let me finish. To be honest, my micro penis is the whole reason I am an atheist. I am angry and cynical all the time, and it's because even with my clothes on, I always know in the back of my mind that every man I encounter has a bigger penis than me. I pretend to be bisexual because I know realistically that I can't function sexually as a male, and the only option for me is to offer someone my ass pussy. I would rather just be straight and be able to pleasure my girlfriend like a real man instead of watching all my friends cuckold. C-U-C-K-O-O-L-D, cuckled her for me. Jesus, if you are real, my Christmas wish is to have a normal, average size penis. Five inches is all I ask from TJ, a.k.a. the Amazing Atheist. Oh, my goodness. That was an honest letter. I, uh, you know, I always knew he was an atheist, and he seems so kind of like... Like, he's not really a deep person, you know? 
this is surprising. He actually is showing some depth of feeling here. And he's so transparent. I admire that. All my life, I have resented the fact that I was born with a tiny, oh, wait a minute. It keeps flickering up. Wow. We even got TJ writing to Jesus. That was Brent Spider. My screen keeps flickering up. That's why I'm reading stuff that's already been read. I got to play with it. Maybe we should be calling him the amazing agnostic. Yeah, that's right. He, apparently this atheist thing that he puts on is kind of like a front and it's covering up deeper feelings that he, you know, that he's been having trouble acknowledging maybe even to himself. I don't know, but it's just it sounds to me like he's covering up a deep side that he's kind of ashamed to talk about. That does have a nice ring to it, Tarant says, calling him the amazing agnostic. <laughs> well, I wonder, Jesus, are you going to answer his prayer, Jesus? Or are you going to keep it with his micro penis? I know one time I asked Jesus if he would change the size of Vladimir Putin's penis because he's so wide. And I thought he must have trouble with had making love to women. And Jesus said that that Vladimir will make it work. <laughs> that was his answer. <laughs> so um, I imagine having a micro penis to a guy is more of an issue than having a too big one. I know guys are, I'm a girl, but I know from having so many men friends that men are really you know, obsessed about their penises. It's a, like a really big deal to them. I guess it's, it kind of ties in with their masculinity, you know. Brent Spiner is typing. You know, I told TJ that we, us, we, we women, we don't care about the size of a guy's penis, but I guess if he's having trouble having sexual relations with a woman, it, it, I guess a woman might care about it, but I don't know. I've never... I've pretty much been a virgin my whole life and I've only had sex with my ex and I've only had brain to brain. And as far as I know, none of my brain to brain lovers have a, a penis that small, you know, maybe Matthew McConaughey, but Matt, I've never had trouble with brain to brain loving with Matthew McConaughey. So, I mean, so I, I got to admit 97% of my brain to brain loving has been with Brent Spiner. So I'm not really an expert on this subject. Brent's got a long one. <laughs> so, but we focus more, not so much on the size of the instrument as we do on the feelings we feel for each other when we make love. So that's where we get all our excitement. Though Brent, Brent likes to get, how do you say, he likes to be verbal about. Jesus says, we will see TJ. You are growing spiritually through this condition. Wow. That's interesting. How is he growing spiritually through that, Jesus? I'm just curious. <laughs> I bet he'd be asking the same question. You may like the story of Job. Job? Oh, Job ended up with twice as much as he had. Hmm, I wonder if Jesus is dropping a hint. <laughs> Job was very self-righteous, though, and as a result of his trials, he lost his self-righteousness. So, maybe TJ has a problem with self-righteousness? I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to be judgmental or anything. <laughs> so, I'm just telling you what I know about the book of Job. That might be all that be growing on TJ, though. That does sound like TJ. Oh, self-righteous? Yeah. Okay, maybe you're right. I was self-righteous, TJ, so don't feel bad. In my 20s, oh boy, was I self-righteous. And the only thing I wanted back in my 20s, the only thing I wanted was to have a happy marriage. And guess what? That's what the Lord did not give me. I wanted, I was, I kept myself a virgin for my husband so that I, so that I would be the perfect wife for him. I saved myself for him. I turned down men left and right to save myself for my husband. And I ended up getting a douchebag. I mean, he kissing him was... A, and I said, Jesus, I prayed every day that I would only marry in your will. And you give me this douchebag that you'd break up any relationship. And what Jesus apparently 
had to get rid of my self-righteousness to prepare me for my dream man. That's what I think, why Jesus allowed me to go through that. David Douchebag, that's what Brent Spiner says. You know, to be honest with you, looking back in my 20s, if I had not gone through that marriage, I don't even know if I would have given Brent Spiner a chance if he came into my life back then. Uh, I would have nothing to do with a Hollywood star or, or anybody who was not a strict, like, conservative Republican type. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't, I don't even think I would have given him the time of day. So I had to go through that marriage to, to learn to have an open mind. That's how I grew as a result of getting a douchebag. When, what I wanted more than anything in the world was to have a great marriage and a great husband, and the Lord didn't give it to me right away. He had to prepare me for it. And then Brent Spiner says, I don't, I don't think David even likes women. Yeah, that's true. I don't think he does. And Terrence Jenkins says, I think that nigga be on the down low. What does that mean, Terrence? I think that nigga be on the down low. You for, you're referring to David? Brent Spiner is typing. <laughs> So Brent, so Brent, you're saying you think TJ might have a bit of a problem with self-righteousness and David, my ex, is a douchebag. Yeah, he agrees. And I don't even think David, I don't think David even likes women. No, I don't think he does either. No, he doesn't respect them, that's for sure. Brent Spiner is typing. Let me get you something. I think that means being in the closet for black men. Oh, who's in the closet? TJ? Oh, oh, David. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if David is in the closet, he has the closet door wide open. Well, any kind of men being in the closet for black. So Terrence is saying being in the closet is not just referring to black men, but for um, any men. So when he's saying, I think that nigga be on the down low, he's saying that this man is in the closet, whether he's black or white or whatever. Well, any kind of man. True that. That's what Terrence is agreeing with me. So he's, he was referring to David. David's in the closet. He's actually a... Uh, he prefers... He's a secret gay. <laughs> he just puts on this facade of being a, a, a fundamental King James Bible-only Baptist, but he's a secret gay. That's what I think Terrence is saying. Not very secret, if you ask me, Brent Spiner, saying, oh... Why, you mean some of his, his, uh, get my, my ex-husband's gay relationships are starting to come out? <laughs> yeah, a lot of his, uh, his lovers, quote unquote, have been getting kind of perturbed with him. <laughs> I've been reading a little, you know, every now and then they'll go online and say something. Because he abuses them. He doesn't really, I don't think he loves anybody but himself, my ex. So. Well... Yeah, I was just telling you my testimony, TJ. So just hold on there, TJ. The Lord apparently wants you to, to learn something to prepare you for something greater. That's the best way to put it. That's what he did with me. Okay, our next letter. Oh, my. This letter appears very old. Oh, this is interesting. The paper is yellow. Oh, boy, you got my curiosity revved up now, Jesus. Not, okay, let's open it. Yellow. Ah, ah. It has a Nintendo stamp on it. Wow. I wonder who that could be. Could that be my son? Because <laughs> my son's really big into Nintendo and that sort of stuff. But why would he be writing a letter to Jesus that's old and yellow? Of course, it may not be him. But then it might be. You know, my poor son. Let's see what's up. He, he went through a lot of abuse. Dear, oh my goodness. Dear Jesus, my dad is a Navy officer 
and he is always gone for months at a time. It seems like almost every time he comes home, he wants to take me on long camping trips alone without mom. That's my son. Every night when we are sleeping in the tent, my dad pulls down my pajama bottoms and sticks his penis in my butthole. I don't like it, and it feels weird. I just think about Zelda and hum the Zelda theme in my head to stop thinking about it until it's over. Jesus, my Christmas wish is for my dad to stop molesting me. Please make it happen any way you can. I don't care if you have to divorce my parents. Maybe find my mom a nice man. Sincerely, Eric Schuler. Oh, my son. What's the date on that, Jesus? Oh, no. What was the date on that, Jesus? Oh, that's why he wet his bed all the time. Oh, I'm, well, I'm glad I divorced that crud. What a terrible thing to do to my son. Brent Spiner is typing. That's terrible. Oh. The date is faded out. It looks It looks like it is from the early 90s. I knew David was a gay. Oh, man. You know, if I had known David was doing that, I would have divorced him in the early 90s. I guess it's good, but that wasn't... Oh, it makes me so mad. It makes me so angry. Ooh. Well, David... Well, Eric did get his wish. I knew that nigga was gay, Terrence Jenkins says. Terrence Jenkins is typing. I didn't know my son wrote a letter to Santa. <laughs> That's interesting. I just knew it, Terrence Jenkins said. Well, and then uh, Brent is saying, well, Eric did get his wish. Brent Spiner is typing. Wow. Jesus saved that letter. <laughs> Man. Brent Spiner says, no wonder about David. He's so cruel. I could tell he didn't really have any genuine concern for my son. The only reason he wanted custody of him. Yeah, but he got a switch, but my, my ex got custody, though. What happened then, Jesus? Was he was he raping my son while I had custody of him? Because I tried to get custody, and I lost. Because that, that Seattle judge, I think, was a Jesuit for my divorce case. He still likes to mentor young boys to this day, Brent Spiner is saying about David. Yeah, Jesus, I'm just wondering. Yeah, he got the divorce wish, Brent, but he ended up getting, my ex got custody of him, though. Was, 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 did David stop abusing him after he got custody because he was worried he might lose custody? I'm wondering if that might have happened. Because a divorce would not have been a blessing if David kept abusing him because David got custody. Brent Spiner is typing. I'm just wondering. I'm thinking that it's possible. I've been thinking about that with my son. I'm thinking it's possible that David might have stopped after he got custody because he was worried he might lose custody. Okay. He, Jesus says, yeah, David stopped. He moved on to other boys. Yeah, he stopped because he didn't want to lose custody because I, I could have got on him for that. Don't worry. He's going to hell for it. Oh. And you know, Jesus, what's so ironic is he is such an avid churchgoer. He's a Bible college graduate. He went, he majored in missions. But then, you know what? Was my, was that, was the real David like that? Or was that just the clone? Because I think, is my son the child of the clone or the child of the real David? Or I guess it's kind of a mix because he gradually became a clone. So who was really the crud? Was it the real David or the clone? Because by the time I divorced him, he was a clone, a full-fledged clone. I know that for sure. Brent Spiner is typing. Both. Oh, so both the clone and the real David were molesting boys. Wow. And you know, I remember when I was a, um, yeah, they were both gay. Uh, when I was a Christian school teacher, I remember that some of my students, when they heard that I was dating David Schuler, 
They claimed that he was messing with their, the, some of the parents were angry because they claimed he was messing with their boys sexually. And I didn't believe them because Dave, we went out, David, I heard rumors from church members that David denied it. And, but then he went into the Coast Guard and I didn't believe them. I thought they were just, they had, they just didn't like him and they were trying to pick on him. I think they were right. But I was so naive as a young lady because I was so sexually pure. I just kind of transferred that onto everybody else. He did admit to me the first year of marriage that he was sexually molested when he lived at home. But he didn't tell me that he himself was doing it. So David, so Jesus said that both, both, uh, David and his clone were gay, and yeah, they were both gay. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm reading it right here. Um, I was I was a very naive girl. <laughs> he denied that in the clinical paperwork, didn't he? Um, yeah, he did. In the clinic, David tried to say he was never molested. That is true, Brent. Brent. He was lying. Yes, he was lying. Yeah, during the divorce trial, I brought up that he was molested, and he admitted that to me, and he denied it all. I I think the judge to our divorce case was a Jesuit, and they were just working together. So Brent's saying he denied that in the clinical paperwork, didn't he? David tried to say he was never molested. He was lying. This explains the findings about Eric to the bedwetting and flat effect. What does flat effect mean? Usually prolonged bedwetting is a sign of molestation. This is Brent Spiner talking. He's a medical doctor. I'm reading Brent Spiner. Flat effect means he had a hard time showing emotion. Oh, you're referring to David or my son? Brent Spiner is typing. I remember reading those papers when you sent them to me. Eric did. You know what? Eric did have a does have a hard time showing emotion. In fact, I think that's why he lost himself into Zelda and Nintendo, because that way he didn't have to deal with his emotions. It was an escape for him. Yeah, he was being molested. This is Brent Spiner talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When 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 we went through our divorce case, I um. Um. Did I mail you those papers, Brent? I can't remember. That was so long ago. I can't remember if I mailed them to you or not. I don't think I... No, I didn't mail them. I couldn't. I was reading them on the phone, I think. I couldn't send you... No, 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 no. What was going on is I couldn't mail you anything because I didn't have an address to write you. I remember reading those papers when you sent them to me. Eric did. Yeah, he was being molested. It was years ago, but you sent us copies online. Really? How did I do that? I don't remember how I did it. Oh, I think it's because you could get onto the computer. Uh, I think Vladimir Putin and you, you, anything I typed on the computer, you were able to pull it up. I think that's what it was. I remember now. I, yeah, I think so. Because I don't think I sent you any emails. I was scared to send you anything because I knew that David was a computer genius and I was afraid he could figure, he could trace it onto the computer. But you had the technology where all I had to do was type something on the computer and using satellite technology, you could just pull it up. I think that's how you did it. I don't think I sent you any emails. It was years ago, but you sent us copies online. But I didn't have your email, did I? Dave is not an anything genius. I wouldn't worry. Well, it was... I thought that it was you, Brian, who told me he was a computer genius. Yeah, but Zach is, but not David. Okay, um, somebody told me that. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Terrance. I think it was Terrance. Terrance said that David's a computer genius. Um, yeah, Zach is... I don't remember sending you anything online. How did I do that, Brent? Maybe I just, maybe the Jesuits took that memory out of me. They do that sometimes. Brent Spiner is typing. Just, uh, boy, this is going to be a long video. How long are we now? We are at, um, 
We are at 37 minutes and 16 seconds. I don't remember clearly remember how either. Maybe we accessed it through your computer when Vladimir was in there fixing it. Yeah, I think that's how it was, Brent. We should do the next letter. I don't remember um, sending you anything online. I was too scared of David because I knew David was good. I thought that David was good with the computer. Okay, I'm going to do the next letter. In fact, I was so scared of David, I actually threw out the one letter you wrote me, Brent, um, where you uh, thanked me for sharing my thoughts about your portrayal of data and all that. I threw it out because I didn't want him to find it and to go after you. I didn't really need to do that, but that's what I was thinking back then <laughs> when I was going through the divorce. Okay, here it is. Dear Jesus, I began my motherhood with, with a deep shame. When I first saw my son's tiny, insignificant genitalia, I thought he was a girl. When the doctor told me he was in fact a boy, I wept. He had inherited his father's shame. To be honest, I don't even think I could have a baby. I didn't even think I could have a baby with my husband. And when I became pregnant, I thought for sure it was one of his black friends. Now I live with the guilt of giving birth to a son who will never be able to pleasure a woman or have an attractive, faithful girlfriend. Jesus, my Christmas wish is for my son to receive an average-sized penis, at least four or five inches. If you could do this for him, I know he will believe in God again. Sincerely, TJ's mom. Wow. Wow. And she thought for sure it was one of his black friends. Ah, oh, what a nice mom. Yeah, Brent. Yeah, she is a nice mom. Yeah. She just wants her son to have a good penis. That's Brent talking. Yeah. One of his black friends. You mean so that she was having affairs with somebody besides her husband? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, she just wants her son to have a good penis. She probably means she was cuckolding her husband. What does that mean? C-U-C-K-O-L-D-I-N-G. I don't know what that means. Cuckolding? Cuckolding? I could look it up. Cuckolding. Huh. No, I better not. I don't want to disrupt my... Uh, com my get out. I don't want it. Oh, turn it off. Okay. Um, I'm still going. Uh, yeah, let's read the definition. Cuckolding. I don't know what it means. Can you guys look it up? I can't. I don't want to do it on my computer because I'm afraid I'm going to mess up the video and everything. Taranch Jenkins is typing. I even I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. C U C K O L D I N G. Brent Spiner is typing. This is going to be a long video. I, of course, I could edit it, but you told me not to worry about length. This is going to be long, kind of like one of those hour-long special newscasts, you know. It's when a man lets his wife or girlfriend have sex with other men. Oh, so he was allowing this because he was trying to get her pregnant so they could have a child, usually while he watches. Oh, didn't know anything about that. Brent Spiner and Terrence Jenkins are typing. That was from Brent who said that. It makes sense since he didn't have a normal penis, apparently. Oh, that's referring to TJ's dad. So TJ's dad was not able to have sexual relations with his wife, with his, you know, TJ's mother, apparently. Hmm. So. Boy, that would be a bummer. Well, they did get TJ. That's true. <laughs> so they did get it to work for that, huh? That's what Brent's saying. Brent's doing most of the talking, so I'll just, if when I read the comments, it's Brent, unless I say it's Terrence Jenkins. Plus, Terrence Jenkins has such a unique personality. You can almost tell when I'm reading him. I don't even have to identify him. 
Okay, so any more letters? <laughs> or does Jesus want to say something? Here's another letter. Terrence Jenkins is typing. Terrence Jenkins and Brent Spiner are typing. There's cat hair all over this one. Cat hair? Wow. I know that David's mother had a lot of cats. <laughs> she was a cat lover, man. <coughs> That was my ex-husband's mother. I think someone let their cat walk on it. There are paw prints on it, too. <coughs> Lori McBride is dropping bombs, man. She's making me cough. Whatever's in those bombs, even when I go out for my walk, I cough. <coughs> Dear Jesus, oh, I know who this is. My master, who you may know as Mr. Buns, wanted a Sphinx cat so he could look cool when posing for his cheesy photo shoots. But he couldn't afford a real Sphinx cat, so he adopted me from a shelter and regularly, regularly covers me in Nair, N-A-I-R, to remove all of my natural fur. He does this once a week, when he nares his balls, N-A-I-R-S, his balls. Jesus. Oh, no, it's the cat. Jesus, my Christmas wish is to be a real Sphinx cat to please my master and also to have sex with Rule 13, who likes both cats, beast, cats, bestiality, and bald pussies. Sincerely, Borgo the cat? How did a cat write Jesus a letter? This is unbelievable. <laughs> Terrence is saying, Rule 13 does like her bald pussy. Brent Spider says, What an articulate cat. How did the cat... Jesus. How, what, was this some sort of telepathy between you and the cat? Cats can't write. Jesus. Explain this. Jesus says... Oh... Jesus says all creatures, great and small, are welcome to make wishes. Terrence Jenkins, yeah, I'd be impressed. Oh my goodness. But but the, did the cat understand my video? I mean, the cat heard my video and understood my English? You know, the video I made telling people to write you letters, Jesus. The cat understood the video. The cat was watching the video. Brent Spiner says, this was obviously a gifted cat. Some animals are pretty smart. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. He must have just talked to, to Jesus in some sort of prayer. Brent Spiner is typing. Tarantic is saying, yeah, I'd be impressed. That's some cat. Of course, you know, you, you look at these animals and you look at their eyes and sometimes they act like they understand you. Okay, Jesus says the cat's prayers made their way to me. Oh, so he prayed. Oh my goodness. But Jesus, was that as a result of listening to my video that asked people to send you Christmas letters? Is that why the cat did it? He understood the video? Yes, it was. My goodness, that's a genius cat. My goodness, he watches all of your videos. Borgo the cat watches all of my videos. <laughs> oh my goodness. Brent Spiner is typing. Oh no. That's amazing. Jesus, do animals go to heaven when they die? Or so, do they all go to heaven when they die? Boy, I tell you, my. He Jesus says he sits in Mr. Bun's lap. Of course they do. Oh, cool! So every single animal goes to heaven when they die. That's cool. Cause I, when I was a little girl, 
I had a poodle that got run over by a car. No, that got killed by a German shepherd. And I prayed to you about that dog. And I think you told me that he was in heaven. And I'd see him again. He got killed by a German shepherd. The dog's name, I think, was Chibi. Brent Spiner is typing. That was a long time ago, Jesus, but you got a perfect memory. You probably remember me. I wasn't even a Christian back then. No, I was a Christian. I was a Christian. That happened. I was a new Christian. And I went to be with my grandparents in Tampa. And then I came back to Miami. And my mom told me that our poodle got killed by the German Shepherd. Yeah, heaven would suck if there were no animals and everyone's pets had to stay behind. Jesus, that's really cool. So all animals go to heaven. What about animals like sharks? Sharks and, uh, you know, the animals. But I, Oh, they probably... Sharks too, Gail. Oh, but they're no longer killer sharks. They probably turn into nice sharks, right, Jesus? In other words, they're kind of like the animals in the millennium. <coughs> they turn into millennial type of animals where they don't kill each other. You know, like you describe, I think, in the book of Isaiah, you talk about millennial animals, how the lion can lay with the cub and they don't hurt each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it pays to know some Bible. <laughs> I think it's Isaiah. I don't know. Um, I'm bad at references, but I have read the Bible a lot. That's really cool, Jesus. What about that verse that says animals go down to the earth and man's spirit goes upward? Do you know what verse I'm talking about, Jesus? What does that mean? That's what some preachers told me. Some preachers don't believe animals go to heaven. They think the animal spirit goes downward and man's spirit goes up or something like that. I can't remember what verse that was in. <laughs> I guess I misinterpreted, I misinterpreted that verse. It's been a while. Well, they go to heaven. Okay, Jesus doesn't want to go there. Okay, that's fine. If Jesus says they go to heaven, they go to heaven. We're not going to go into Bible here. <laughs> Too complicated. Next letter. Okay, Brent's saying next letter. Jesus said, well, they go to heaven. That's not, hey, if Jesus says animals go to heaven, they go to heaven. That's awful nice of you, Jesus, to let them go to heaven. Because, you know, there's they have a personality and they seem like they have a soul. Even though I don't, some preachers think animals don't have souls. So that's nice to know. Uh. Okay, let's see where I am. Dear Jesus, all my life, I have been ashamed of my tiny micro penis. I prayed and prayed that should I ever have a son, that he would be born with a normal man's penis and that I would not pass on my shame. To tell you the truth, when my wife told me she was pregnant, I didn't believe it was possibly mine. I didn't think I could even make babies for the same reasons pandas are going extinct. But when I saw my boy's tiny clitoris sized penis. I knew he was my son. I wept. Jesus, I cannot bear the fact that my son now bears my shame. I once told him that only money matters when it comes to courting women and that I was able to sleep with playmates and models. That was a lie. They were hookers. I paid them to worship my penis and tell me how big it was. I am afraid my son will never have a real relationship with a woman and will be forced to claim bisexuality or be cuckolded. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Or even both. Jesus, my Christmas wish is for a big, loud pickup truck. So when people see me driving down the street, they stop to look and say, Wow, that guy has a big pickup truck from TJ's dad. Why would he wish for a big pickup truck? You'd think he would wish for his son to get a regular sized penis. What an odd man. Yeah, why would he wish for a pickup truck? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It seems like, 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 I don't know. He, he goes, uh, 
It's, I wonder if the truck is a form of denial or something. Hmm. Doesn't seem anything related to what he talks about at the beginning of his letter. Brent Spiner and Terrence Jenkins are oh. typing. Sometimes men do it for compensation, Brent says. Oh, it makes yeah. him feel manly. Terrence Jenkins says, I think a pickup truck would help. Really? Inform me. I'm a dumb woman in this area. Why would a pickup truck, truck help a man with a small penis? Brent Spiner is typing. Brent, Brent Spiner and Terrence yeah. Jenkins are typing. Men, some, Brent says, men sometimes associate their cars with their virility. Oh, so a big pickup truck makes him feel like he has a big penis. <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's what Brent's saying. Okay, Brent Spiner is typing. Maybe TJ should get one. Okay, if it makes him feel better, yeah. Until Jesus decides to reward him with a larger penis, if he does. And Brent Spiner is typing. I think that whole family has a lot of growing to do. Time will tell. That's what Brent says. Really, Brent? Why do you say that? Brent Spiner is typing. Anything you have to add, Terrence? Brent Spiner is typing. Boy, this is going to be one long video. I think I'm going to edit like the, the dead spots. And um, there are a couple dead spots in here. Um, maybe a stronger faith in Jesus will allow them to grow bigger penises. Oh, that's true. Yeah. There's one more letter in the stack. Brent Spiner is typing. I never did send Jesus any letters. I always prayed to him. <laughs> it's a little crumpled and smells strange. That's interesting. Boy, Jesus has chosen some interesting letters. Jesus says prayers count like Borgo's letter. That's true, Jesus, because... All we have to do is just pray to you, and that's the quickest way to send you a letter. <laughs> Dear Jesus, I am a poor black man from the projects. My mama raised me and my eight siblings alone on food stamps and the money she got from her being a stripper. She ugly, though, so sometimes she didn't make much. I can't get a job. Because there ain't no businesses in my area, just the apartments. I live on Martin Luther King Drive, so I can't move out, out my mama's. I don't got a car, so I can't get to college. Now that I be grown, I got me some welfare just like mama, but it barely leaves me any money for weed. If I only had a college education, a stable career in a high demand industry, and some financial organizational skills, I could afford my own house in a nice neighborhood, start a retirement fund, and maybe even raise a proper family. Jesus, my Christmas wish is for $5,000 so I can put rims on my nigga's car and we ride around and pick up some baby mamas. Also a new iPad because the screen on my other is broke. Some weed too. Thanks much, white man in the sky, Jermaine Martin Clemens. Never heard of him. <laughs> Brent Spiner is typing. This sounds like that hood mentality. Yeah, I don't think Jesus is going to answer his prayer for rims on his nigga's car. A lot of millennials have this. 
And you know, I don't think he's going to want him to ride around and pick up some baby mamas either. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how Jesus feels about the weed. Terrence Jenkins is typing. I thought it was a good's wish, though. Well, the part about the college education and all that is not bad, you know. Really, Terrence. $5,000 to put rims on his car and pick up some baby mamas? The iPad's not a problem. That might help him. And I know Jesus was smoking some weed <laughs> one time. Terrence Jenkins is typing. Jesus, is Lori McBride going to cause problems with this video? I guess I don't need to worry. I guess he wouldn't wouldn't tell me to do it if she would. Black men need good goods rims to get them baby mamas. Them don't go to them public. Them don't go to them public bathrooms with no scrubs for sure. For sure. Oh, so if he has the automobiles, then he's not going to go to the public restrooms to to do his thing, huh? And so that's good. Brent Spiner is typing. Yeah, I guess it helps them reprodu reproduce. Oh, okay. I guess it's part of the the part of their culture that I you know I wasn't raised that way, so I don't understand it completely. It would be better if he had money to to support his kids, though. Brent Spiner is saying. Terrence Jenkins is typing. True that. <laughs> Brent Spiner seems to understand the black culture pretty well. I guess it's because you're friends with LeVar Burton, huh, Brent? I think you and him are like BFF. I know he rescued you from Lori McBride one time, and then, she, then, then the Jesuits just put clones of her on you. Yeah, LeVar and Terrence are his friends, so he, Brent's saying, yeah, LeVar and Terrence. Yeah, LeVar Burton practically saved your life one time when Lori was raping you at that, uh, Paramount Studio Studio. LeVar is kind of an Oreo, though. Really? Oh, well, you mean because he makes so much money? And he's a celebrity, so he's kind of like a white man? Exactly. Yeah, he's not... I think he's been rich for so long, he's forgotten what it's like to be poor. That can happen, you know, when... <laughs> Brent Spiner is typing, yeah. He's been rich for so long, he's forgotten what it's like to be black. That, yeah, that's true. You know, I it kind of reminds me, Roots was like his pickup truck. Yeah, that he got really rich after that. Um, I remember when I was a little girl, my mother criticized me all the time, so I had an inferiority complex, but... You know, I've had you in my life for so long now, Brent, that I've become quite a confident woman. I've almost forgotten what it's like to have an inferiority complex. <laughs> I'm still pretty much a humble person because of that, but I am not shy. When I was young, I had such an inferiority complex, I could stay in a room with a bunch of people and not say a word for an hour or longer. Just be scared to open my mouth for fear I'd do something wrong. Um, that's what my mother did to me. That's how she raised me, you know. And I've, I'm not like that at all anymore. I've, I've been with you for so long and you accept me just the way I am that I've just, it's like I've totally shed that. <laughs> so thanks to you, you've helped me to uh, learn to accept myself. I'm so glad, dear. That's what Brent Spiner said. Yeah. That was part of the reason I overcompensated as a young lady and was so rigid. I was trying to overcompensate for feelings of inferiority and why I became such a rigid Christian. And Jesus had to, you know, he had to help me to get out of that. It looks like this wraps up our letters. Okay. Um, so Jesus wants me to put it out right now. Yep. Okay.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on Windows Movie Maker and um, I'm going to try to edit out any dead spots and it's going to be still pretty long. So I better get off and get going, eh? It was great talking to y'all. Brent Spiner is typing. Yep, no problem. Okay, I'm going to cut it off. This was a fun video. It sure was. Bye-bye. Love y'all. Good night, dear.